Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal bringing you another video today talking Rolex and whether or not I feel it's currently overvalued, what's the buying situation, and uh, how I feel it will look like in the future. Now of course before we jump into today's topic, I just want to say this is purely speculation on my end. Unfortunately, I'm not a fortune teller, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't accurately predict uh, what Rolex prices will be, so this is pure speculation on my end. Uh, based on obviously my limited knowledge and what's available to me in terms of resources online. So jumping into today's topic, do I feel Rolex is overvalued? Well, I don't think Rolex is overvalued specifically on the gray market because at the end of the day, uh, watches trade based on their supply and their demand, right? Obviously, I'm an interested buyer. I'm looking to buy a Rolex Submariner, a 114060. So that's the 40 millimeter sub no date. And so I think it's important to look at Kind of the watch market critically before buying and seeing if you're entering potentially at a good or a bad period and as of now i just don't see the rolex market going anywhere now one scenario was brought to my attention that i feel is worth pointing out so i'll point it out for you guys and the idea is obviously rolex prices have soared or watch prices in general for a lot of watches have soared over the last kind of few months to a year and a half if you will uh, due to COVID-19 lockdowns. Ultimately, people can't go on vacations or spend their discretionary income on kind of experiences. And so what are they spending on their, their income instead on is on watches. So one scenario, again, is the possibility that people, as of course, COVID-19 lockdowns begin to slow down and we're able to kind of travel more and what have you, uh, potentially might sell off their, their watch collections or as part of their watches and ultimately go and travel and, uh, you know, do whatever they enjoy doing. And, and again, I think that is a possibility and it could potentially cause a pullback in the prices by about, let's say, 5%, 10%. But after we get beyond the 10%, I mean, it's hard for me to justify uh, uh, that, that firm of a price decrease because there are so many buyers in the market. I just don't see a scenario where interested buyers who think maybe the current prices are just too high wouldn't buy it on that 10% dip and ultimately uh, kind of take advantage of the price decrease. So I, again, I don't see a massive dip coming from Rolex watches. If it would come, I would say it would be more of a slow squeeze over a long, uh, over a prolonged period of time. So over, let's say two to five years potentially. But again, I just don't see a super big decline in prices. And if it were to decline in prices, I think the first model would be that would be affected is kind of the second tier of steel sports. So my first tier being Rolex Sub, the GMT uh, Master Range, and the Daytonas, and then kind of the second tier being really everything else. I mean, you can include the Sky Dweller in the first tier. Of course, it's totally up to you, but for me, at least, I will just leave it out of the first tier for now. So again, I see potentially a price decline in the future, but it is pretty outlandish to think, in my opinion, that Rolex prices will decrease by a significant amount in a very short period because of COVID-19 lockdowns ending and more and more people kind of selling off their watches to ultimately fund these experiences and these trips uh, around the world. So that's one scenario I'd like to bring to your attention. Again, I put really no stock into it, but I mean, I just wanted to bring it up Again, purely for entertainment purposes, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So why I believe the Rolex market is extremely healthy and I think that ultimately will, it will continue to go out for the foreseeable future is for the simple reason, let's dive into the first one at least, is that the watch market is continuing to expand. More and more people every day are joining the watch hobby and the watch collecting uh, space as both an enthusiast and as a collector and so the first brand that they tend to gravitate towards is, of course, Rolex, simply for the cachet and the brand equity that it has. Now, of course, Rolex does make great watches, but let's be honest, a lot of the times new watch collectors are buying Rolex not because they think that they're great watches, it's because they're great stores of wealth and because they want the kudos from their friends, families, and wives, right? And so, uh, and their girlfriends, of course, lest we forget their girlfriends. Now, of course, um, the idea being, if more and more people are pouring into the watch market, the demand for these watches will continue to rise. And so what you'll see, of course, is basic economics 101. If demand increases and supply is stagnant, ultimately what we'll see is an increase in price over time. Now, I think that personally, that is one scenario uh, that justifies why I just don't believe Rolex pricing will really go anywhere specifically on the gray market 
because at the end of the day, a retail they're getting harder and harder to get. And of course, the watch market is so big. I mean, I just don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. The second reason is that more and more new money, as I like to call it, is pouring into the watch market than ever. So watches are being viewed, in my opinion, uh, increasingly as a new alternative asset class. So what makes watches different, in my opinion, is that it's not only a great store of wealth, is that it's completely different from your other kind of investments, right? A 401k isn't easily transportable, nor is a physical property. You know, you can't just sling your house on, on your back and uh, kind of go uh, to wherever you want to go. Uh, at the end of the day, watches, you can do that, right? If you want to cross borders or go travel with your watch collection, you 100% can do that. So you can easily store a lot of wealth in a very compact amount of space, which other, ultimately no other asset class really offers uh, that kind of potential. So with watches being viewed as an asset class, more and more investor dollars are being poured into the watch market. And so I think watches are ultimately being viewed increasingly as an asset class, which benefits the watch market and the health of the watch market and overall watch prices, because again, more money means more demand, which ultimately with supply being equal will lead to an increase in price, right? That's just economics 101. So those are the two reasons why I think that the Rolex market is pretty healthy. And I don't think that it's going anywhere. Of course, there is the potential for a pullback. Listen, Rolex prices have been steadily increasing now for I want to say the better part of the last kind of few years and you know are we due for a correction potentially but i mean i think that rolex prices at retail are still very undervalued uh you know if you can get them at retail all day i think that they are the best bang for your buck in terms of the watchmaking and in terms of the timelessness of their design and the regulations of their movement you know i think rolex watches are fantastic maybe they don't get the kudos that they deserve but they are great watches in terms of their movements and, and in terms of their build quality. So that is one thing I will say that because they are undervalued at retail, it does lead to this gray market kind of explosion. And it's also coupled with the fact that I don't think Rolex is a typical watch brand. You know, I don't think that they're competing with the majority of the watch brands that we see on the watch market. What I see Rolex as is really a lifestyle brand, a brand that pitches the idea of success, affluence, uh, and, and kind of, you know, yeah, really that success and affluence if you're wearing their watches. And so in that respect, I think that they're kind of in the Hermes, Hermes kind of category where they're more of a lifestyle brand that owning those pro products from this brand is kind of a way of life and a way of living. And of course, a status symbol. Now, I think those are all healthy things for the Rolex market. So if, as I look at the Rolex market as an interested buyer looking to get the Rolex sub 114060, I don't think that it's a bad buying opportunity despite Rolex prices being at the highs that they are at currently. I think that actually the Rolex market is incredibly healthy and that it will fortunately uh, for us holders of Rolex or buyers uh, or sellers of Rolex, fortunately for us, but for the buyers like myself, it's pretty unfortunate, but I just don't see the, the, uh, the Rolex market going anywhere anytime soon. But guys, again, this is pure speculation on my end, purely for entertainment purposes. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Where do you see Rolex going in the future? I'd love to get your thoughts and opinions. Guys, my name is Marco. I'm your watch cardinal. Of course, this is an invitation to like the video, to subscribe for more videos in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.